I was talking to my fiance the other day and she told me she hates to write and I asked her, well, why exactly? I'm curious if this sounds familiar to you. So she told me, I don't know how to write. Whenever I needed to write something, people always told me that my writing was terrible. They never told me how to actually do it. So when I got to it, I just looked at the text and the requirements and what, what phrases to use and I just scrambled it up and filled in the blanks. Literary scrambled eggs. And I thought, well, I, I understand. This is something I have felt myself as well. And it's very easy to understand why people hate to write. We don't see the point of it. Nobody ac actually bothered to tell us what the point of it is. We feel like an imposter in writing anything of significance. We hate the process because we don't know where to start. We hate our tools. We hate our handwriting. What would your relationship to writing be if you had an exact process of how to go about it? You knew exactly what to write, what not to write, where to start, how to go about it. Would that change your relationship at all? It did for me, but it was a very painful process and it took me years to figure out. And the funny thing is, it is actually super easy to write well, but you need to understand seven fundamentals. And the worst part is that I can get you up to speed in less than 10 minutes. So there's absolutely no excuse for why we never get taught properly. I'm Sean Buckles, I'm a professional writer and publisher. I've published over a million words. I cannot give you money, but I can give you the skills that have made me money. If you like that, you know what to do. So we don't get taught properly. It's not very difficult, so I don't understand why this is the case. You need to write all the time and people require you to write for your work and, and, and write reports and stuff like that and it's boring and it's painstaking and difficult and if somebody took the time to just 10 minutes to explain the fundamentals it, it would be so much easier. So I thought I, I might as well do it if nobody is going to. Yeah, I hope it helps. Your pen is your greatest earner. And once you understand this, you understand the importance of writing. Even if you don't have to write anything in your daily life, in my opinion, you should know how to. Simple fact is that the entire system is built on text. Every interaction you have with the system is text. So you need it to write persuasive job applications, to apply for loans or uh, licenses. Uh, or write effective emails to collaborate with people. Also, most importantly, knowing how to write well is the same as knowing how to think well. So writing clearly is the same as thinking clearly. And there are not a lot of people that understand this, but it is a secret weapon. I think that a big part of why we don't like to write is our relationship to writing. So when we grow up, people tell us, write this essay, write that thing, write this email, write that letter. And we only write the things we absolutely need to write. And that's boring to do. It doesn't interest me. I'm not curious about the subject. Also, nobody told me how to actually write it. So it's a painful, painstaking process in which I feel like a, an imposter all the time. And I feel very incompetent. And I, I set out to fix that. So I thought I have to figure out how to do this, how to write well. The truth is that most teachers don't even know how to write well. So they, <laughs> they require you to write all these things and then they say, oh, this is terrible to read, but they cannot actually tell you how to write it the right way. So that's useless. Uh, but most professionals and most officials don't even know how to write properly. Nobody seems to get trained on this except for perhaps the very high tier schools that have writing lessons. I don't know. Okay, let's get into it. Because of this slack in the system, let's say, most people's writing process is something like, like this. I call it the literary scrambled eggs method. So it goes like this. I need to write something. Hmm, what do I need to write? What, what do they want me to say exactly? What, what does it need to look like? 
What technical standards does it need to adhere to? Let, let me look that up. All right, I have some pieces of the puzzle. So what phrases and subheadings does it need to contain? Let me write an email real quick to my, uh, to my boss and, and ask him what he, uh, he'd like to see in it. All right, N now that I have that, should I throw in some buzzwords? All right, I'll, I'll write all these things down and now I have like 30, 40% of the text is already filled in. How do I make sentences out of this? Let's, let's fill in the blanks using some random words. And this literally produces literary scrambled eggs. So the joke is that this entire process is almost completely perfect. It's almost the correct way to do it, believe it or not. But there's one critical step missing and it's such an easy step, but when you overlook it, the entire process goes to rubbish. So. The critical step is figuring out what you actually want to say. If you take the time to first figure out what you, what you want to say, what question you are actually answering, the, the rest of the steps, you can leave it as is. When I write a text, I also start with the subheadings and overall structure. Well, I'm, I don't start with it, but I'll get to that in a minute. But I also fill in the blanks. It's like a puzzle. The difference is I know what I'm trying to say and what question I am answering. And if I know that, the subheadings and the phrases and the, the little snippets I have in place already actually make sense. And filling in the blanks is actually very easy. But many people feel like an imposter when they have to write something and this is probably rightfully so. Most people are not experts on most topics. I am not an expert on barely anything. How not to feel like an imposter? Well, it's very easy. Don't pretend to be something you're not and never say something that isn't true. This is easier said than done and you need to define what is truth and stuff like that. And I have done an entire video about this. And if you're interested in that, you can watch it there, but it's not for this video. You don't have to be an expert on anything as long as you're upfront about it. The reader doesn't expect you to be an expert. You can get into the same boat and start to sail together. Writing is an exploration and the relationship you have with the reader is you're gonna explore this topic together. And it's perfectly fine to walk people through your thinking. To start with a question, to say, I'm curious about this and let's go and explore together. So here are some bonus tips, some secret magical phrases you can use to, to get on the same page with the reader. When I first started thinking about this subject, I didn't know anything. And now I'm going to share with you what I've learned. And the second one is, I'm curious how this or that or the other works. So let's find out together. If you start your text with something like that, people will know what to expect from you and what not to expect from you. And you can be very honest in what you understand or what you don't understand. So the second thing to never feel like an imposter again is to write about things you actually want to know about. And then write as if you would actually want to know the answer. So to follow your curiosity. But Sean, yeah, I have to write about all kinds of stuff I'm not very curious about. Well, here's a, a very neat little trick. You can always find an angle most of the times, perhaps not with seven technical details to file for divorce. Yeah, all right. There are things that you should, you're probably not that curious about. Get, get another job. I, I don't know what to say, but most of the times you can find an angle, some sort of way of tackling the question that you actually would like to know about. And if you can slip in those, those little expeditions of your own, it could be very enjoyable to write. The last thing I'd say is if you, you're not sure about what tone of voice to write in, how you say something, how to phrase it, what words to use, I always have this simple rule of thumb. I always write as if I'm explaining something to a friendly neighbor. And I find this works very well for almost all texts, even professional texts, because you will be polite and patient and understanding, but also 
you will care about whether the person understands what you're saying and you will be concise and respectful of their time and all these things. So I think that's a great little trick. If you hate your process, there are three things you can do to magically fix that. First, we need the right tools for the job. You need to like your tools. So I recommend getting a good pen and I prefer fountain pens most of all. They are excellent writers and they are very easy to use once you know how to use them. Good paper. Leuchtturm 1917, Clairefontein, Rodia. Those are the three you might want to look at if you like good paper. A good keyboard. I have, this is not a very expensive keyboard. I have an, a simple mechanical keyboard. They are clicky. But how to fix the process of writing itself? Well, you need to understand the fundamentals and they are very easy. The secret to writing is to focus on structure instead of prose. So don't get into the nitty gritty of what exact words to use. If you learn how to structure a text, anyone can write. I'm sure of it. This is how I learned to write well. English isn't, isn't even my first language. Millions of people have read my texts and seem to like them. So you can do it as well. And it's easy once you know how. First, start with writing and then worry about writing it well. So I always start with just brain dumping everything on the page. Everything I want to say about the subject, anything that pops into my mind that is relevant one way or another, I just write it down and I don't worry about the structure and how to order the information and how to say it. I just dump it. Now it's out of my brain. It's onto the page. The worst is over. I have collected all the pieces of the puzzle and now we are going to make something out of it that resembles anything like a decent text. Writing is a process of answering a series of questions. So if you're not sure what to say, just start asking questions and write down those questions as well. So you, you have to write something about, um, let's say you're in construction and you need to write a report about one project or the other and you start asking questions. When does this project need to be finished? And then you answer it. How much does it need to cost? And then you answer it and you can uh, ask all these sub questions. So what should this cost? What should that cost? How much should I budget for this? And then you can ask questions like what problems do I foresee with this budget and why and how, sh how should we fix that or how could we mitigate those risks? So once you start asking questions and answering them, you have all the information. And then, and then we move on to the next step, which is figuring out what is the most important information and what is not important. What sentences can you remove without altering the message? And if you find that you can remove a part of a sentence, a word, an entire sentence, and the message still stands, bin it, throw it out, just get rid of it because everything that is not critical to the message is just there to distract the reader. If you learn to be very good at killing your darlings and just binning everything that isn't critical, you'll find that your writing instantly, magically will be very, very good. And you don't even have to focus on what exact words to use. Just scrapping everything that is non-essential will 10x your writing instantly. The next part is to structure the text. So we have the pieces of the puzzle, we have prioritized them, and now we're gonna structure it. The most important thing to know is that any structure is better than no structure at all, even the simplest structure. So my rule of thumb is this. If I'm not sure what the structure needs to be, I just split it in three. This works with design, this works with architecture, so it might as well work with writing. I don't even know what the three parts will be, but I have the pieces of the puzzle and now I'm going to fill in this structure. Unfortunately, I can't cover everything in this video. It would be a very, very long video, but if you want to learn more about how to write well, you can go to onepenshow.com forward slash secrets and there you can download my short guide at no cost to you. I provide this to the world. It is my gift 
and it will go into detail about all of this. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, like this video, and if you want more tips like this, you could consider subscribing. The first part should always be the most important information. What question am I answering? What is the exact answer to that question? We always want to front load the most important information. This is a very important thing to know and it's a, it's a kind of a magic trick for writers. We always work our way towards a conclusion when we think. So we start with arguing, with stating facts and information, and then towards the end of the article or the thinking, we have a conclusion. That's a perfectly fine process. This is how we think. The only thing you need to do, the last minor step, is to flip it on its head and to start with your conclusion and then state your arguments. From the most important one, to the least important one. If you do that with anything, with emails, with start in the, in the topic of the email, the subject should be, this is what I want you to do. And then in the email explain what, why and how and all that, all that jazz, you know. So if you invert your writing to your thinking, people will understand your writing. People will think, what a writer, excellent. There's one more thing I would like to leave you with, and that is you have to make sure that people actually hear what you're trying to say. You have to make people want to listen to you. And if people don't listen to you, you're probably making a very easy to fix mistake. And that's what this video is all about. You should go and watch it next. I really recommend it. It's really good.